Now, we are almost ready to start talking about uh, differential kinematics inversion. When we discussed inverse kinematics in the previous uh, in, uh, topic, that was at a configuration level. Okay. Now, we would like to afford a slightly different problem, apparently, in, in this moment. Now, we talk about uh, differential kinematic inversion. Why we need to to go into the velocity level and uh, we cannot try to inverse uh, the kinematic of a robotic structure at the configuration level. Well, because uh, we have seen that uh, only simple structures can be inverted from the kinematic aspect. It means uh, I assign the position orientation defector and I find what is the joint configuration that provide me this position orientation. And so I do need to, 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 develop, to develop a theory that allows me to do it for a generic structure. Okay, that's the reason why I'm uh, trying, I'm looking for something else. First of all, may I invert this one? Well, actually, yes, uh, it seems to be easy because uh, this is linear in the velocity. At each sampling time, this time continues, but let me say at each instant, J is a matrix, it's given by numbers, okay? This is assigned by my problem. I do know where I want to go with the end effector, with the linear velocity. So I need to obtain Q dot. And this will be the Q dot that allow me to achieve this end effector linear velocity. It seems very easy. I just need to invert this one. Okay, well, if uh, it is a square problem, actually it's very easy. Square problem means that uh, the number of degrees of freedom is equal to the number of uh, the, the line of the Jacobian I'm interested in. This is not six, why? Because I may be interested only in the linear velocity. In that case, this is three, okay? If I have a three degrees of freedom and I'm interested only in the linear velocity, it means that J is square and Q dot is simply given by, well, we just made the, the refresh of the linear algebra concept. So uh, the inverse of uh, the matrix J multiplied by the end effector velocity that I do know. Okay? And if I have a Q dot, I can easily obtain Q by integration. And this is my Q. Okay, that's uh, apparently easy. Mathematically, it is easy. But it, it doesn't work from the engineering aspect. Let's see why. Well, first of all, I, I don't have any way to implement this uh, analogically, okay? I may have a, a PID implemented analogically, but not a, a, a control law for robots. Everything is digital. So it means that uh, I need to, to, to convert this continuous time equation in its corresponding discrete time. For example, I need to make the numerical integration by means of an Euler uh, formula. It means that uh, the new position is equal to the previous position plus the velocity coming from the inverse multiplied by the sampling time. Okay, this is the easiest way to make an integral. 
Yes, that's nice, but well, this is open loop. And uh, we do know from uh, last year that the integral of the velocity is not the position. We, do, we will experience a drift. What does it mean, a drift? We will see a ex numerical ex example later on, uh, I think, uh, uh, tomorrow. And also, I mean, yes, fine, you find a solution, but this is only for a square problem, rather than a robot, uh, square problems, okay? So that's, that's not uh, a solution that I may uh, generalize. I do want to solve two, those two issues. First of all, I don't want to work only with full rank square problems. And second, I do want uh, a closed loop solution. I like, I mean, uh, feedback. And I think that uh, it's better to have uh, zero errors in the end rather than integrated and accumulating an error. OK, let us first uh, try to remove uh, the assumption that my robot is square. My problem is square. However, it means that uh, I'm facing a Jacobian that is not square, and in particular has more column that row. The column are the degrees of freedom of the robot, and the row are the linear and angular velocities. Okay, this is the Jacobian. So let us first uh, reason a little bit about the concept of redundancy so the concept of having more degrees of freedom than required to achieve a certain task and uh, i will try to do it uh, graphically try to understand uh, graphically the concept of redundancy now Differential kinematics, uh, here the equation has been just copied again with the geometric Jacobian, that's all, okay? But now my geometric Jacobian is R by N with the N larger than R. So my robot is redundant. I have more degrees of freedom to do what I want to do. I can uh, visually represent the concept uh, of dominion, image, and null space by, I mean, this is a simple plot. Here I have uh, all the possible set of Q dot, all possible uh, values for Q dot, by means of uh, the Jacobian, so by multiplying by J, I have the image, I have all the possible and effector velocities, and this is the image of J. Okay, this is a matrix property of someone call it the rank of J. However, due to the fact that uh, my matrix has uh, more column than rows, certain point in Q dot will project on the null element uh, on the end effect of velocities. The set of all those joint velocities is defined as the null space of J. Now, assuming that the rank of J is equal to R, so to the dimension of the task, the dimension of the image is R, and the dimension of the null space is n minus r. The q dot, uh, I mean, they don't get lost, lost anywhere. And I do have that the dimension of the range of j and its null space is n, the dimension of q dot. What does it mean that uh, 
a velocity in Q dot uh, is projected into, sorry, into the null space of the matrix. Uh, let us first have a look at it uh, from uh, the algebraic aspect. Now, let us see the same concept uh, as uh, we saw in the, in the refresh of the mathematical concept, but now with uh, the uh, symbology of the robotic symbology that, that we have seen. Actually, the genetic solution of uh, VA is equal J Q dot, the generic solution is given by one specific solution plus an arbitrary projected in the null space. Okay, this is the null space of matrix. If I want to validate this concept, I can uh, left multiply by J. So I project on J the solution, and I do have that jq dot this is jq dot then jq dot sar the one specific solution and then uh, this one that is uh, zero by definition i do only have uh, jq dot that is vicone by definition what does it mean it means that uh, certain joint velocities uh, provide a movement on the end of that. Some other gives zero here, but Q dot is different from zero. Those are internal movements. Now we want to have a look at the robotic example. And it means, uh, sorry, it means that uh, it means that uh, I can exploit this redundancy in order to have some additional movement of the robot. Now, this is a, a commercial, and very often the commercial are, are very nice. You have to look at the, um, at the end effect, okay? Here is uh, now back to the line, and this is the internal motion. Okay, you have to look at this point here that does not move, where the mouse is now. All those Q dots are clearly different from zero because the robot is moving, okay? But multiplied by the Jacobian, they provide here zero because this is not moving. So this is the robotic interpretation of uh, the algebraic solution of having a vector q dot a arbitrary multiplied by the null space. Of course, uh, it means that uh, I'm picking a point here in all the set of joint velocities that project into the zero element at the end effect. And this is an internal movement from different perspective, okay? So you can exploit redundancy in order to achieve a better configuration to finish your task, for example, to ac accommodate your task. Now, those concepts are, you, we don't have yet those concepts, but it's important that it is not holding this one, okay? It is still, because of the control loop, not because it's holding it to the end. Okay. Now, if I want to make the inversion of differential kinematics, and uh, I know that mathematically it means that my J is a low rectangular, 
I understood a little bit the concept of redundancy for a robot. It means that uh, I have uh, the possibility to provide some internal motion to, to my robot. Then now the problem is the same as uh, a linear algebra one that we just uh, reminded uh, last hour, but with a robotic interpretation. Let us try to do it. We have more unknown than equation. Okay, the third situation. We are in the third situation. This is uh, our mathematical problem. So exactly the way we have done it, we can say, okay, I minimize the unknown that now is Q dot. We used to use the, 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 the letter X in uh, linear algebra. Now in robotics is the velocity because I want to minimize, well, this is the norm. We have seen it uh, in the quadratic form, remind me, this is the norm. So I want the minimum norm joint velocity. And it, it does have a lot of sense from the engineering aspect. If I have an infinite way to move my robot from here to here, because my robot is redundant, I want to do it with a minimum norm velocity. Okay, it's... And the solution is, well, we already know, it's a pseudo inverse. Now, here, we don't care about how to find the solution. For example, with the Lagrange multipliers. I don't, remind, I, I don't remember it, for example. Okay, but from calculus, I do know that uh, I can find the solution. Well, the right, the right set inverse of J. Exactly the same, but with different notation, and, I mean, more important, with different interpretation. I may desire to weight the joint differently. Well, this is also quite uh, uh, reasonable in robotics because the velocity of this joint here from the, I mean, energetic aspect uh, is uh, more important than the velocity of this one, for example. So I may want to weight in a different way, and especially to provide a larger weight to the larger inertia joint and smaller one to the other one. So that in the optimization issue, in the optimization problem, I take into account this different importance, and I have a weighted right pseudo inverse, very easily, compact form. Okay, very compact, and it can be computed by uh, a single command in MATLAB. Of course, uh, in order to make uh, a proper weight, I need a positive definite matrix. So this is a quadratic form, simply, okay? I may desire to consider another kind of optimization problem, and this is also very interesting for uh, robotics, say, okay, I do not want to minimize Q dot. I want to minimize the distance of Q dot with respect to an arbitrary Q dot. This is, uh, I want to minimize this vector, and this vector is the distance of uh, Q dot, the unknown, from an arbitrary Q dot. I solve my optimization problem. Well, what is very interesting is that my solution is exactly the generic solution for this kind of problem. So Q dot is equal the pseudo inverse of J multiplied by the known values plus my arbitrary vector projected into the known space. I cannot have zero here, because I always have the constraint that uh, V equal J multiplied by Q dot. Okay. Okay, but arbitrary, what does it mean? Well, arbitrary does not mean that I select a random number. Arbitrary means that uh, I can try to achieve additional control objective. For example, I can try 
to charter, characterize the internal motion. My internal motion, this is the N effector, my internal motion will not be arbitrary. I will try to do something useful with my internal motion. Something useful, and uh, this is a textbook, so the, the simplest case are, for example, okay, but uh, if you have uh, infinite uh, pull, pull velocities and you can try to, to move your internal motion, one possibility could be to try to avoid the kinematic singularities, because I do know that kinematic singularities are bothering me a lot. Why? Well, very easily. Here I have a set inverse of J, and I, I told you that uh, this is a division by zero, is a division, and if uh, uh, the matrix loses rank, I have a division by zero issue. So I may ask uh, my algorithm to stay away from the kinematic singularities. I can try to do it. And for example, I define a matrix that say, okay, let's try to move away from the determinant equal zero. So this is a, a mathematical way to say, let's stay, uh, try to stay far from the kinematic singularity. Okay. And the name, the fancy name is uh, try to maximize the manipulability measurement. Q dot A is then a gradient of this one. If uh, I remember the way to find the local minimum of a nonlinear function, this is a gradient. Another possibility is to maximize the distance from the joint mechanical limits. My joint cannot go from uh, minus pi to pi. For example, it's very easy to, to, to recognize that our arm has very limited uh, joint uh, possibilities, joint ranges, and the same is for robots. Sometimes some very smart uh, mechanical design allow you to have uh, one, two joints that can rotate uh, infinitely, for example, the last one, okay, or the first one but all the others, they have limited possibilities uh, most of the time. So you can try to stay away from the mechanical joint limits. Now, this is the mathematical expression. It's not very important now to go into the details. Now it's important to, to focus on the fact that uh, I can use the internal motion to optimize, to maximize something. If I have an external uh, obstacle, I can try to maximize the distance from the obstacle, okay? To stay away from the obstacle by using the internal motion. Now, again, don't care. This is not very, the, the specific implementation is not important. Now, what is it? Concept that can be exploited, for example, to characterize the internal motion of the robot. Uh, this is uh, a, just a, 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 a draw taken from uh, a uh, PhD thesis of uh, a, a German researcher that uh, uh, represents a generalization of what uh, I just uh, said here. I have uh, a robot with uh, a lot of degrees of freedom, really a lot. Our robot in, in the lab uh, has each 20 degrees of freedom uh, with the humanoids uh, of uh, uh, larger dimension, you can easily reach uh, 30, 35 degrees of freedom. And the end effect is always six. Okay, so you have plenty of redundancy. And for example, uh, we developed, we also work a lot on this one, on the way to exploit all this redundancy, obviously with some uh, more uh, complex algorithms. And for example, you say, okay, let's, let's try to uh, classify the objective, counter-objective uh, in importance, from minor to critical here. The critical one are the safety, I don't want to 
to break anything in the robot or, or the human. So collision avoidance, self-collision avoidance, collision detection, it's different. I may want to use my redundancy to improve my uh, perception on the environment. For example, I can move the head of my humanoid robot. My task is this one, and those are clearly no, not correlated. But if I go in that direction, I can move this coordinated because I want to have a look, for example, at something moving there. Then, just lower priority the physical constraints. I want to avoid to reach the joint limits, the equator limits, the workspace, for not falling down. And then uh, the task execution is just no, below. It's not the most important. And in this case, I want to move my end effector or locomotion for a humanoid and so on. Lower priority, OK. If you still have uh, degrees of freedom, optimize something, because we are uh, engineering and we like to optimize stuff. OK? So this is a bigger picture of the redundancy. We will stay here. I mean, we will, uh, in this class, uh, we will, uh, you will uh, learn how to move the end effector and uh, maybe to reorient your robot in order to stay as much as possible away from kinematics. This is a excellent project uh, by one of your colleagues a few years ago. So let us have a look uh, without redundancy, without exploiting the redundancy, and then exploiting redundancy. Okay? So now uh, we have seen yesterday this uh, software with. Uh, the educational robot that we bought, and uh, I will try to, to, to make you work on the physical robot. Okay, this is uh, what I would like to introduce this year. We do have also uh, those one, and uh, you will use uh, uh, both because I mean they're exactly the same process and nothing changed. Now, he decided to add those uh, items, but just for uh, you know. Uh, marketing and it's not very important. Now, the trajectory is intentionally selected in order to hit this small wall. Now, without exploiting the redundancy, this robot has seven degrees of freedom, is not using all uh, them, and just uh, say, okay, you are assigning me a task of six degrees of freedom, and then just fill your task. So now I have a segment, a desired segment connecting the mouse of the of, of uh, the human with the, the point where I grasped the glass. And this is what's going on is eating the, the small wall. Now, let us exploit the redundancy. We're changing the color of the hairs of the human. The grasp, uh, I mean, is made manually by clicking on the bottom because it's not part of the course, okay? Uh, it's just uh, a feature that uh, can be used from the software, but it's not studied in this uh, class. Okay, so it made the obstacle avoidance in order to avoid it in this by exploding the six degrees of freedom of the robot. And this is more or less the order of difficulty of uh, uh, the exam for the mechanical engineering. For the other, there will be additional difficulty. OK? OK. The last concept, and then uh, we leave uh, 
the, 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 the exciting part of the differential kinematics inversion, so the closed loop part, the next lesson. Okay, can I try to do something in order to better avoid kinematic singularities? Well, let's try to let's try to, to, to use the redundancy in order to do it. Okay, well, first of all, uh, this is uh, a, a, let me say, a more or less uh, mathematical solution, the first one that is not very, uh, is not very easy to generalize. I mean, if uh, J is not full rank, but by chance, the end effect or velocity that I do want, they are physically achievable, I can try to, to use uh, some uh, patch and solve uh, as well the, the equation. I mean, this is not very, very uh, robust. My robot, uh, planar two link robot in this configuration can only have a tangential velocity. Okay, this is something that we saw studying a kinematic singularity. Is if by chance I do really want to go in that direction, well, I play around with the J and I go in that direction and I don't see the kinematic singularity. But this is something that, uh, that uh, is, really, is really specific. What is really bothering is when I'm working close to a kinematic singularity. Okay. Because now I can understand that if I have a small determinant of J, I have a large Q dot. Let's see why. Scalar. Relationship. Now, let us imagine that uh, the non-term the non is, uh, for example, uh, 3. OK? And uh, A, A equal 1. This means x3 divided by 1. OK? Fine. OK. E equal 0 dot 1 means x equal. And what if uh, a equal f? Epsilon uh, much smaller than one, it means that uh, x is equal to three divided f. Okay. Three divided epsilon that tends to go to infinity. Okay. And uh, I mean what What's the matter of this one with the robot? Well, it's, it's exactly the same because this is uh, my situation, okay? Now, the E is known, so those are numbers, is the, the, the velocity of the end effect. This is the unknown, and if I want to make the seed inverse, it means that here I have uh, Q dot is equal J third inverse multiplied the E. But as I told you, conceptually, this is a, a, div a division. And it means that uh, here 
this is, uh, I mean, let, let's consider the square case. This is the adjunct of J divided by the determinant of J multiplied by V E. So if this guy here goes to zero, the velocities goes to infinity. Okay. So the issue is not in the kinematic singularity, because I have probability zero to reach the kinematic singularity. The issue is when I go small, uh, small, sorry, when, when I go close to the kinematic singularity. Because for the same end effect or velocity, I experience very large Q dots until safety routine for the robot intervene. Okay? Okay, so another optimization problem can be imagined. For example, say, okay, I do not want only to, 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 to minimize the error, to have zero error. I want to minimize the joint velocities. And, okay, I can accept an end effector error and want to minimize it. So now I can have the so-called damped least square inversion. So a new objective function, and I try to minimize this one. Now, always mathematical problems with uh, a robotics uh, interpretation. What is interesting is that uh, the solution is uh, still another kind of inversion, J star. Look, uh, this is uh, the set inverse, J transpose, J, J transpose, plus K square, so a positive number. Regularization of my problem but I'm uh, modifying the J in this way, and so I'm uh, adding an error to the end effect. The point is, okay, I can try to avoid uh, high joint velocities, but the price to pay is that I don't go where you want to go. This is only an emergency to be activated when you are close to a kinematic singularity, and you want to avoid very large Q dots. Okay? If you try to invert a, a matrix that is uh, uh, almost singular, some uh, software, they, they just add this term without telling you, okay? Some number. So you should pay attention to that. Okay. I would like to, to, to stop before moving to next uh, topic that is, let me say, most important of, uh, of, uh, of, this, um, of this chapter of the differential kinematics, and is uh, the implementation of the algorithms for the kinematic inversion. I want to remind that all of these solutions, so the solution that uh, we found here by, by inverting J in one way or another, they are open loop. Okay. Then they need to be numerically integrated, and it means that they experience a drift. We will see it uh, at the tomorrow lessons, what does it mean that they experience a drift? And I need to close the loop somehow. And this is what uh, uh, we, are going, we are going to do. Okay? Let me just finish uh, with uh, a reminder only on nomenclature. So this is just uh, one page to, no, to wake up the neurons uh, that you should have used uh, in order to, to, to remember only the, the, the nomenclature. So if I excite a dynamic system with a step input, I see the step response, and then I can recognize that there is a certain transient 
let, let us assume that uh, it's a stable system, then uh, the steady state, when uh, it reaches a constant view of value, I can ide identify a settling time, a constant time. Constant time, for example, uh, is uh, uh, the constant time we will see later. An overshoot, a rest time, and eventually a delay time. So those are all uh, the characteristic aspect of a step response. We will uh, maybe use those concepts uh, in a more or less uh, uh, informal way during the lecture. Okay, next lectures. This is why I just put this uh, here. Okay. Any question? Okay. Uh, question from uh, remotely? Okay, it is not the case. I stop. Very cool.